Hi, I'm Alex Perez. This is the Flophouse. It is a board that will allow you to uh, load content onto Virgin Amigas that don't have any installed OS and it may also be uh, usable for networking someday. It has uh, some onboard spy flash, an SD card also spy, and it's based on the Cypress PSOC controller which is also used in SCSI to SD V5. Right here is where the DB23 connector for the attaching it to the back of any Amiga is uh, gets soldered, and um, the uh, uh, actual um, connectors that are broken out here are SPI, I squared C, some places for some buttons or GPIO, a UART, and we also bring the 12 volt out. It's powered from the Amiga itself, so there's no need for external power. It runs on the 5 volts provided by your Amiga. Yeah, and here's m most of my presentation at AmiWest, which was abbreviated due to some technical difficulties. Uh, to use this as a mechanism for network, uh, we do writing SD cards, things like that. So the, the ultimate goal is to bring uh, people from the Amiga community who are interested in this um, out of those shadows and, um, and I, I, we got 20 boards, I actually made them up front when I was real, relatively confident after hand assembling one here and there that they weren't gonna, um, there wasn't going to be a disaster. Uh, and um, uh, on every board is a place, we did populate it in the test runs we did, for, um, uh, for, uh, for Spy Flash. So on this particular board, we have 256 uh, megabits, which is 22 megabytes, of spy flash, and um, and with uh, with the image on the spy flash, we're able to boot um, straight into uh, workbench, um, which is obviously something that uh, you know bootstrapping in Amiga if you don't have a computer with a serial port or uh, uh, another Amiga um, can be a tr can be a problem for uh, for people that have dusted off their old Amiga or bought one uh, you know from a friend or on eBay or whatever. Um, so the goal is to be able to use this as a conduit through which you can bring up any Amiga um, and transfer files between them in a sort of sneakernet fashion um, if you so desire. Uh, because the, um, the SD card slot, 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 slot that's on this board is also just a spy, in theory it could be anything you want that's spy, uh, including networking. So um, uh, there's the flip box. It, it works, it's affordable enough, and, but, uh, but the idea is for this to be a kitchen sink. Um, and the source code for this is on GitHub right now, but it's in a private repo that we haven't opened. And, and the goal is that in the next, uh, uh, well really before Christmas, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have an invite program where we bring in some people um, uh, right now we're working on a problem of, of the, so we're trying, working on improving ease of firmware updating. Uh, right now you need a kind of a JT USB driver installed on your machine, and that's not really ideal, and so we're trying to come up with a mechanism that allows for uh, firmware updating without the need to um, uh, fuck with USB um, driver. Uh, but um, once we get over that hurdle, um, I hope to bring um, uh, a greater quantity of people. Um, the firmware itself is um, uh, is written in, um, uh, but is, is developed rather in um, the Cypress proprietary software, which is unfortunate, um, called PSOC Creator. But because this Cypress part is both an ARM Cortex and free on a chip, as well as um, so a bunch of uh, CPLD-like functionality, um, you are limited to uh, their ecosystem in terms of the development tools that are available. Although, that said, there are ways um, to, uh, to use open, fully open source tool chains to compile code for the board, um, but just not for the um, CPLD-type functionality. So, um, right now the Flophouse has uh, sort of controllable personality. You can you can boot from it and, it and it just emulates a floppy interface. And then once you've booted from it, you can actually tell to change modes and you can speak to it via I2C. Um, so you can just send in an I2C command. Uh, and, uh, and, and right now, the I2C is not high speed, it's quite slow. 
Um, so the, the, the genuine usability of it and the kind of utility that we get in the visioning uh, is limited. But um, uh, we're ratcheting up the speeds that we're testing with, and we're also working on reliably just doing basic things like reading and writing data to and from the spy flash and SD cards. Um, and, uh, and when you get that sort of, um, you know, walk before you run stuff out of the way, then the, there's a longer list of things that would be nice to have. Um, and the reality is that uh, I can't justify um, working on this uh, more than X percent of the time, which is why it's been a background project for us. But um, uh, I, I, that's why I want to open it and bring other people from the community who may be interested in, because uh, if we have multiple contributors, um, the, the chances of this seeing the light of day in any meaningful way in the future, um, and, and being the tool that, that we can be widely used and, and, and manufactured, frankly, uh, more affordably, um, is, is something that uh, we, that's one of our goals. So um, we, have, uh, we have 20 of these. Um, anyone anywhere on Earth who would like to get their hands on one and is capable of um, some fairly basic uh, 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 updating of firmware and that sort of thing is welcome to get in contact with us. Um, the best way to do that right now is via um, the um, uh, uh, Radical Computing website. Um, and you can also see some videos of this device in basic electrical testing situations um, uh, at the uh, Amiga Flophouse website, which is really a placeholder at the moment. Um, but uh, if you go to Flophouse, that's F L O P H A U A U S dot online, there's a website there with some, some Vimeo videos of, of the device, and we'll be updating it more regularly uh, once we have. Uh, what I need to actually do is update it with a video of the, of the device booting because we were only successful in getting it to the point where we were able to do in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, uh, uh, and I have some crappy shaky cell phone video that is not worthy of putting up on uh, on YouTube or, uh, or Vimeo. But, um, but yeah, so uh, uh, these are fairly inexpensive to make even in small quantities. Um, they're certainly not as cheap as, as flash floppy, and I don't really consider this competition to flash floppy simply because um, that open source project is uh, pretty mature at this point. It works reliably. It works with you know hundreds, if not thousands, of of devices, and this is meant to be uh, specific to the Amiga uh, and specific to the external facing side of the Amiga. Now that said, in theory, there's no reason why uh, we couldn't make a version of this for internal use. Um, I just think it would, it provides less value to do so, at least initially. Um, because there's already a perfectly functional solution in the form of, uh, in the form of uh, flash coffee and um, uh, the Gotex. So, um, Gotex, you know, a dime a dozen, relatively speaking, you can get them for 20 bucks. You can get them pre flash now, which is great for people who don't want to bother uh, with um, uh, updating firmware and strapping numbers and things like that. Um, so, so on this board today, we've got uh, extra pins on pin headers for Iceberg C. In addition to the Iceberg C signals that go to the floppy port, uh, we also have the spy pin header. And so theoretically, any off-the-shelf uh, Chinesium type uh, spy interface can be connected to this. That could be the Ethernet, that could be, um, uh, you know, anything. Uh, it could be a... Uh, non-ball RAM, it could be not, you know, other types of flash butter, uh, displays, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, um, but today, uh, the uh, product is not a product, it's a purely experimental state, and, uh, and I, I suspect it's going to take us another um, uh, 8 to 12 months before we're uh, maybe uh, thinking about getting it into the hands of, of you know, 100 people or 50 people um, to kind of really bang on it. But, um, but I thought it was worth talking about because um, there's been a lot of activity in the, in the open source uh, the hardware. Um, in fact, one of the other things that happened recently was um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, some open source um, PCB layouts for GBP SIMs 
which are uh, 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 difficult to get a hold of in original form because of uh, um, the, their rarity and their scarcity. Um, and so um, the, the, I was selling some here at the show, but the, but the, the layout itself is open source and can be downloaded from uh, GitHub. Uh, and, um, and I'll put a link up to that on the Rabbit Hole Computing website as well when I'm done with this talk so that people can go and download it uh, if they want to. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, the, the idea here is to, is to not is have a product on the Flophouse site that isn't, doesn't cost an arm and a leg and allows you to bootstrap your Amiga from scratch with no other tool at your disposal um, other than maybe a computer to put content on the wall. Um, do you have any questions? The GBP Sims, or is it 4 megabyte only? or is Right now the ones we have are 4 megabyte only. Um, the board layout it was open source, so it could be modified. Um, the, the, really, the only reason why we went with 4 meg um, uh, uh, design was the, the exemplar PCB was available, and it's what um, uh, it's what Eric, uh, who made them, um, was able to buy memory on a, re on a real form. So he bought new old stock memory, he did uh, batches of them in his own personal reflow oven, and, uh, uh, and, and he chose the four meg sims because those are the easiest ones to actually get the parts to make. Sorry, Alex, I'll repeat the question for you, yeah. It's a sneaky question. <laughs> uh, I've been asked, where can I buy an Alice laptop? Yes, you can actually buy Alice laptops, and you can buy them from me. Um, you can buy them here at the show, uh, and you will be able to buy them on our website. We had some interesting developments with Alice um, over the last couple of years, and uh, one of them was that uh, uh, at some point, uh, recently actually, earlier this year, uh, I switched uh, credit card processors, and the new people, the new credit card processors said, well, you, uh, they crawled my website, and they looked at every product that we had available for sale, and they said, well, wait a minute, you have to produce resale uh, agreements uh, for every product that you have that you don't make yourself. And, um, and obviously, for SCSI to SD, that's not a problem, because I make it. Uh, we, we manufacture those, but um, but uh, I didn't have a, a resale agreement with Acer, and uh, and so they said, well, you can sell those. We don't care if you're doing it in small batches. We don't care anything uh, other than you've got to show us the paper, and if you don't, we won't allow you to transact. And so they have actually frozen my account when they found this, um, and it took a few days to hash through, but. Um, uh, and at the end of the day, I just mark the inventory as out of stock and, 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 and uh, you know, hit the items on the web store, uh, which, is, which is where they stay today. But after that incident, uh, Rabbit Hole Computing became a Lenovo retail. So I now have access to all of the products that Lenovo makes from data center grade things all the way to, uh, you know, their micro PCs and laptops. And in theory, uh, I can uh, I can make any um, of those products into an Alice device uh, if there is sufficient interest. So um, uh, what I don't have access to, unfortunately, through the reseller network, is our uh, laptops with non-US keyboard layouts, which um, has been a, a, a request uh, many times over the years, and it's something that uh, uh, that became an issue um, when uh, I had sent out. Uh, Questionnaires previously, um, and obviously there are plenty of people who are, are comfortable using US key keyboard layout. But if you spend your whole life using something else, I think we understand why you wouldn't want to use a laptop with a keyboard layout that is not uh, in your native language. And my second question then is, what about the Alex boxes? The Alex boxes, the so-called Alex boxes. Um, yes, they will run Matty OS. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so uh, the Alex boxes are the, the uh, are these uh, refurbished Lenovo machines that um, I was tinkering with as a platform for um, for uh, delivering Alice on, and those are um, ultra small form factor uh, machine uh, that is. Uh, actually quite powerful, a socketed Intel CPU on it, uh, has 
an NVMe uh, M2 SSD socket on it, um, and, and it uh, fits in uh, not quite the palm of your hand, but the palm of two hands. Um, and, uh, and it's a product that Lenovo actively makes and supports. Uh, it's also easy to ship anywhere in the world because it doesn't have batteries in it, which is another consideration that we ran into with the logistic, on the logistics side of distributing Alice, because uh, uh, all, all carriers have very, rather stringent requirements about um, shipping uh, devices that have been opened and have uh, batteries, which um, unfortunately function as bones uh, fairly well. Uh, in them. So in the, in the States here, you can't send anything with a laptop battery in it. Uh, by air, it has to go by ground, and it's constrained to, uh, obviously, that, uh, the cost is rather high, um, and it takes a fair amount of time because it has to go by ground. But, um, but the, the little machines we're talking about, if anyone's curious what the model on them are, the refurbs I have are Lenovo M900 Tinies. There is an M900 that's not a tiny. Um, uh, that's a weird thing for Lenovo, but um, uh, but those devices are uh, 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 modern Intel um, seventh generation, sixth seventh generation um, machines, and uh, and the uh, equivalent, a modern equivalent that Lenovo makes um, has uh, these at uh, yeah, they're, I think they're eighth generation, um, uh, you know, available in uh, Core i5, Core i3, Core i7 configurations. The particular ones I refurbished are um, uh, Intel uh, Pentium dual-core machines that have uh, 16 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig SSD, um, and, uh, and those are available for $350 in an Alice configuration. Um, uh, but once that once that um, collection of machines that I refurbished is gone, that that deal will not live on simply because. Uh, I won't be able to build them at that inexpensively in the future. So, um, so if everyone, anyone's interested in one, um, again, reach out to us on the Alice Laptop website. Uh, we, we're happy to um, uh, have uh, you know, answer any questions, and we also have a mailing list there where you can subscribe. Um, currently, we have about 60 subscribers, and uh, we will be sending an update out um, uh, probably later next week about the status of all of this. Um, the unfortunate reality for me is my house is in an evacuation zone right now, the wildfire 12 miles away, and uh, I'm going to be going home and dealing with that later in the day. Uh, and, uh, and there won't be, oh, and by the way, we don't have power either in the long for probably another day or two. So um, that sort of puts a, 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 a halt on how much you can do when you don't have internet access, much less electricity. But um, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a really cool form factor. I like it, and it would be more on that front. Uh, and obviously, when you have one of these kind of machines, you bring your own keyboard, you bring your own mouse, you bring your own uh, uh, display, ideally one you already own, and, uh, uh, and, and you solve the problem of uh, keyboard layouts indirectly. So, um, so yeah, so that's the, uh, the Alex Alice machine, and uh, uh, we have uh, we've had one here on demo at the show, and uh, 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 we got uh, Trevor's Alice machine souped up with more RAM and SSD. Thanks again, and, uh, uh, and and so there'll be more on it, but uh, uh, but it's again it, it's it's not going to make me rich, and so because it's not going to make me rich, the unfortunate reality for me is I have I have only, I can only give it so much time. But uh, just as anything else in any of the world works, it, things happen slowly, and uh, uh, this will happen slowly. Alice is happening slowly, but uh, at the end of the day, it was actually a pretty good experience, and I was amazed with how well uh, OS 4 performs on these dual core printing machines. Um, and uh, if you, as long as you've got a fast SSD and enough RAM, um, it, it actually is uh, amazing what uh, a dual core machine uh, clock that three, um, three gigahertz can do. So, um, more to follow on that front. Uh, again, if you're interested in participating in further development of Flophouse or would just like to see um, uh, what it looks like in Intel, contact me and I'll be happy to uh, put um, things like photos, high-res photos, videos of it online uh, for greater consumption. Uh, maybe we can have a discussion about it on one of the forums. So, uh, thanks for your time, everybody. Any other questions? Thank you.